now, says the Lord, return to me with your heart, whole heart, for I am gracious and merciful. And I praise and God to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. While still more people gathered in the crowd, Jesus said to them, This generation is an evil generation. It seeks a sign, but no sign will be given it, except the sign of Jonah. Jonah became a sign to the Ninevites. So will the Son of Man be to this generation. And the judgment of the Queen of the South will rise with the men this, of this generation, and she will condemn them, because she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon, and there is something greater than Solomon here. At the judgment, the men of Nineveh will rise with this generation and condemn it, because at the preaching of Jonah they repented. And there is something greater than Jonah here. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good afternoon, everyone. Of the twelve prophets of the Old Testament and the four prof greater prophets, all of them had the vocation to announce the word of the Lord to the people of God, to Israel. Of all of them, Jonah. Jonah is the only prophet in the Old Testament that God sent to a people of the Gentiles, a town of the Gentiles. It was a uh, an arduous mission to enter the heart of the world and the greatest city at this moment of the 8th century before the birth of Christ and there in the heart of the world to preach about the God of Israel. And the wonder is that the king responded and not only the king with him but the people of Nineveh repented and why? Jesus said, because of the word of, because of the preaching of Jonah. But a word pronounces the word of God. A prophet has to enflesh this word, has to demonstrate this word. Something in the face of Jonah and the manner in which Jonah announced the word, it was an instrument for God so that the people of Nineveh could see their face, listen to his voice, and receive the grace of repentance. God speaking to this man, God looking at me and this man, and responding not with pride, opposition, no, with the desire of repentance. Jesus is greater than Jonah here. And contemplating his passion, walking through the streets of Jerusalem, many re rejected Jesus. But also, there were some who received Jesus. Perhaps they did not understand this man with the cross, but they remembered his gaze. The presence of Jesus not walking through Nineveh walking through Jerusalem to Calvary. Why were there 3,000 men who listened to Peter the day of Pentecost when they understood who Jesus was and what Jesus did? And why did Jesus die for our sins? Perhaps some of them were there on Holy Saturday. When Jesus passed by them, they remembered I've never seen a face like this before in my life. I've never seen such a pure love. 
in the midst of so much cruelty that I've seen. Jesus preached the love of God, walking his via crucis. Today in our religious and spiritual family, we remember a very special anniversary, the anniversary when our mother founders received the crown of thorns, and also a participation in the way of the cross of Our Lady. Contemplating the participation and the gaze of Our Lady, united with the heart of Christ in her path, passing to Jerusalem so that all of us could also walk with him, also receive the greatest word, the, the word greater than the word of Jonah, repent, believe in the gospel, return to God with all of your heart. In this path, contemplating the love of Christ, also our mother founders receives a manner, a path to con console Christ. That is, as the people of Nineveh responded to the word, we also want to respond to the word of Christ. And this is the path of reparation to repairing the wounds in the head of Christ from his crown of thorns. Our mother founders received a, a vision, a path of four steps. Our Lady said, Mother Della, he showed her four virtues that repair the heart of Jesus for the thorns of our sins. With charity, we remove the thorns, every choice of charity, every thought of charity, every gesture of every word of charity are, are removing a thorn from the head and the heart of Christ. Second, with sacrifice, we heal the wounds Yes, after removing the thorns, there still is the wound. And we also want to participate in the healing of the wounds in the heart of Christ with every sacrifice. And like Our Lady said to the three shepherds, th it doesn't have to be great and visible sacrifices, but true ones and made with love in communion with the heart of Christ. Lord Jesus, forgive us. I offer this sacrifice in reparation for all the sins and outrages against your heart. And this act of sacrifice heals the life and the heart of Jesus. The third step, with the virtue of meekness, we erase the scars. A meek and humble heart is a heart that understands the heart of Jesus, responds like Jesus, looks like Jesus, is sharing the passion with Jesus. That is why the virtue of meekness erases the scars in the heart of Christ, because it reveals a new heart in us. Healing is in us when we enflesh the virtue of meekness. Yes, when we have a meek heart, I'm not going to respond with violence, with hatred. I have and many enemies. No. I'm going to pray, forgive them for, for so much cruelty. Forgive them for so much violence. Help me, Lord, to show your love. We will become the meek face of Christ because we have a meek heart like Jesus. The fourth step. With humility and obedience, we can place the crown that he deserves. The crown that Jesus truly deserves from us. It's the crown of our love, and only a humble heart 
an obedient heart could crown Jesus because it's the heart that truly has God as his only treasure, that God is his king, that God is his all. On this day when we are contemplating so many thorns, wounds, scars, in the mystical body of Christ amongst all of us and in some countries, and how are we not going to remember the people of Ukraine and in the maternal hospital with women and babies inside. Yes, there are many wounds and scars, so it's the moment for us to offer much sacrifice and charity, meekness, humility, so that we may console the wounded heart of Christ. There's one greater than Jonah among us, and it's the pierced heart of Christ. And we want to receive his gaze so that we may become his face. Offer the heart of Jesus through the heart of Mary.